Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. And today I'm going to start on book two of Euclid's Elements. And uh, book two is not really a very long book. And most of the propositions are in fact not really that interesting. But there are some uh, aspects which are uh, worth noting. So let's begin. Now, um, the first 10 propositions are not really interesting at all because they deal with uh, facts that in effect were addressed in book one. Uh, for example, uh, Euclid says that if you cut up this whole rectangle into smaller rectangles, that the smaller rectangles will uh, be equal to the larger one. Well, uh, that's pretty obvious because one of the common notions says that things which are equal to the same thing are themselves equal. So, <clears throat> this particular proposition says that, uh, well, well, one has to be very careful because uh, Thomas Heath makes a statement here by saying this proposition is a geometric version of the algebraic identity. Actually, it's the other way around. This algebraic identity is uh, a version of the geometric identity. Okay? So, and, and of course, this ellipsis here is a little deceiving because... Um, it, it doesn't, the proposition doesn't say you can do this ad infinitum. In fact, it says it can only be done for a finite number of lines. Okay. So, uh, it says that if there are two straight lines and one of them is cut into any number of pieces. Now, remember, number does not mean infinitely many. Okay. And this is very important because the stupid mathematics professors of the mainstream believe that you can distribute multiplication over addition uh, with infinitely many operands. That's absolute rubbish. You cannot distribute multiplication over an infinite series. Okay, because if, if say for example, this were an infinite, it's not infinite because there's no such thing as infinity. But even if it were, then it would only be true for a certain number. Okay, and that's what it says. Now, uh, all the propositions from 2 all the way through to 10 are pretty unremarkable, okay? And pretty straightforward, so there's no need to go to all those, through all those laborious proofs. Um, but proposition in, uh, 11, in fact, is quite interesting. And let's see what proposition 11 is all about. So what does it say? It says that we can take a straight line, any given straight line, AB, and uh, we can find a piece of the straight line such that the product of that piece and the entire straight line will be equal to the square given by this particular segment. Okay, so in other words, uh, what you're looking at here is the solution to a quadratic equation of this form. So if you let AH be K and AB be C or chi as you pronounce it in English, uh, then of course BH will be the difference between C and K, right? As you see over here. So BH will be the difference. And uh, what the proposition is saying is that this blue area is equal to the red area. And it doesn't matter how you move these points. That will always be true. So, what are the steps in creating this diagram here? Or this uh, uh, interesting proposition? Well, one, you draw the line AB. Then you draw a square uh, on AB. This square here this big square, then you choose point E halfway along AC, and then you extend uh, CA 
to f by this distance, by this uh, particular distance, which is the length of e b minus e a, so that this blue line here is equal to this blue line. And then you take a square on a f, or rather a h, you take a square on a h to form this uh, square. And then the result is that if you multiply this length here, b h, by the entire length, then it'll equal to AF squared. And the interesting thing here is that uh, the golden ratio or the golden mean is realized from this proposition, okay? So, if, of course, if you had to use circles, this is the way it would be constructed. So you'd start off with the first circle here to draw AB, and actually C1 uh, can be used to draw uh, a, B. So C1 like that, and then C2, and then C3 to draw this particular rectangle at the bottom here. And of course, you have the final one, which is the other constructions. And these dotted lines here will show you how you can obtain this particular diagram so that you can find chi in terms of bh and the square of ah. In other words, ah squared is equal to chi times bh. Okay, so that's really what you're looking at. And if k is equal to 1, the special case, then you have what's known as the golden section or the golden mean. In Greek, it's called chrysitomi. Okay a golden cut. And so that's all that Proposition 11 tells us. Um, now you can produce many fancy uh, diagrams and uh, beautiful fractals, etc., but they're pretty useless, even though they're pretty. Uh, and all that you're really interested here is that you have this uh, golden ratio, which is realized by doing what the proposition states. In other words, following these steps, okay? And that's pretty much it. Uh, there are two more interesting propositions. Actually, yeah, two more interesting, 12 and 13. And 14 is not that interesting, but 12 and 13 are interesting, so I'll cover those in another video at another time and then hopefully we'll be able to start on book three, which has uh, more information that one can use to arrive at the meaning of number much later in book seven. And that's pretty much all I have for you in this video. My name is John Gabriel. This is New Calculus Channel. Till next time, goodbye.